We're getting ready to start just a couple of minutes. Okay, so we're live. Hello and welcome. So my name is Rob Howard and we're here today for, let me get out of the way, EFL Talks and Niall Tiesel. And let me get both sides. And today is September 27th, 2020, and we're going to start off. We've got 10 great speakers, but before we get started, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about EFL Talks, and let me just switch over. And those of you who may not be familiar with us, this is EFL Talks. And this is something that I started five years ago. In fact, next Sunday will be our fifth anniversary and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. So um, the whole idea is teachers teaching teachers. And the idea behind this was that I was looking for something that was fast and free for those teachers around the world who weren't able to go to a lot of the expensive and far conferences. Um, the whole idea behind this is we do 10 and 10. And what you're going to see is our speakers will be talking. They only have 10 minutes to talk and they have to do their whole talk using only 10 slides. Now, in the past five years, I've been pretty busy. As you can see, we've been all over the world from Italy to Japan to Ecuador. We've worked with TISO, we've worked with Aya Temple. We've done just about everything. And um, we've been all over the world. This is a little sneak preview of next week's. Next week, it'll be five years to the day. We'll have so far 390 EFL talkers 34 events, over 550 teacher development videos. So that's over 120 hours. Um, we take very seriously parity in EFL. And if you notice our numbers, we're 61% women and 65% non-nest. In fact, in 2018, we won the EVE award for parity for EVE of the year. And we've gotten a few EVE awards for our different uh, productions. Now, everything, these are all being recorded. So you can see these later on our YouTube channel. 
And what I ask you to do is help spread the word to other teachers and take a Cephaly. A Cephaly is just take a selfie of yourself with the FL Talks in the background and put that online, put it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever, and help spread the word. Um, this is something that I do myself. We're not sponsored. Um, I put up all the money. We have a couple of books out and that helps us support EFL Talks. So if you have any questions, get in touch. But you can follow us on the Facebook, EFL Talks, and we also have an EFL TD group. And these will be going on throughout my talk, so you'll see it. But you can go to EFLTalks.com and everything is there. Um, the way to contact me, all the events, you click on the event and you'll see it. So far, 390 EFL talkers, and this is my crew, and they're my backup. I couldn't do it without them. Um, this was a dream I had five years ago. People thought I was crazy. I am, but, uh, you know, we went ahead with it, and it's working out great. We have teachers all over the world who are presenting. And we have teachers all over the world who are learning because of the work that these teachers, these EFL talkers are doing. So we're very proud of our speakers. I would like to give a big round of applause to everybody here. I really want to thank um, Niall Tiesel for supporting this and getting involved with us. And a special shout out to Hannah, I won't say it. <laughs> I'll use the English version, Hannah. And um, thanks to her for organizing this and for getting the speakers, for being patient with me over these past few weeks. And uh, we hope to have a great show and we're glad that you're all here. So without further ado, we're gonna start recording and if um, if you happen to leave, this room is only made for 100 participants. I see we're already at 95. And if you have people who want to join us, this is being broadcast live on the EFL Talks YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and put in youtube.com slash EFL Talks, you'll find us. It'll show live. EFL Talks, Niall Tiesel. So tell your friends and family, invite them along. And so let's bring up our first speaker. And Abdel, if you can turn on your mic and camera. Okay, let's see. All right, we have one of you there. Well, we had you for a second. Let's see. Uh, yep. Okay. We have sound. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Delati, say something. Okay, something. Okay, well, <laughs> we can hear you. We can't yes. see you yet. Okay. <clears throat> you can turn on your camera. Okay, how about okay. now? 
And then if you can start your PowerPoint and okay. share the screen. Okay. Yes. Start sharing. Let's see. And just put it into slideshow. Okay. Slide chain. Okay. Fine. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, um, what I'll let you do is I've got the official EFL Talks timer here. Okay. You've got 10 minutes. So, I'm going to cut you off, both of you, at 10 minutes. So, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you're the first one. So, take it away. <laughs> Okay. Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today in our EFL Talks. And thank you, Rob, for inviting us all to this fruitful event, inshallah. Um, I'm going to start my talk with, um, you know, a striking title, Teacher's Survival in Crisis. Okay, so teachers' survival in crisis, um, it's a, a catch titles. Uh, so uh, in your opinion, um, how teachers can survive in crisis and how is it related to us as teachers during our last crisis, the, the, the crisis that the world has witnessed, you know, um, COVID-19. So we are gonna talk about it and we are gonna share ideas with each other of how we as teachers can strive and get over all, all the crisis with our talents as teachers. So one of our um, um, great participants um, by being technological illiterate, yes, uh, Mr. Ahmed, yes, uh, that's great by having technological aids and it doesn't only mean technology but the source is in you as teachers you know you as teachers you are a creative person you are one who can shape characters who can shape personalities and that requires you to be talented in many in many other respects and that's what we are going to say in the next slide so uh, what can you tell me about this picture? <laughs> who can, who can, who can um, tell me about this picture? Yes, cast away. Yes, it's cast away. And uh, it indicates how uh, Tom Hanks in this movie did not surrender to the fact that he is going to die. No. He strived, he, he did the impossible to get back to his original life and to get over the cries that surrounded him by being abandoned, alone on an island. And that's exactly what we did as teachers during the COVID-19 um, crisis. So uh, that is, um, you know, um, background of um, our uh, uh, EFL talk today and that's what I'm going to uh, talk to you about. So our crisis was the COVID-19 and you have seen how we all suffered from it but you as teachers what did you do to overcome this crisis or what did we do here as Egyptian teachers to get over such a crisis? <clears throat> so we flipped learning, yes, uh, from moonlight and our circumstances. Yes, we have done this um, from Ahmed. We alternative technology and um, yeah, of course, the technology helped us a lot. But uh, the question is, so uh, what did you do with, with the technology? Technology was just a means. So is, the question is what you literally did 
So how was your performance? Uh, what ideas? Uh, you know, uh, how did you share the knowledge that you have with other colleagues? So here is uh, the criteria that we are going to work on uh, on this slideshow. So how uh, EFL teachers survive um, that crisis? Um, we we are going to we are going to divide it into you know um, into I, I divided it into three main parts. And if you can consider uh, more than one, uh, I will be happy to hear from you. So the three dimensions uh, that we worked on was number one, carrying out your mission with your students. And number two, uh, personal professional development. Number three, your voluntary work towards your community of teachers. So these are the three main aspects that uh, I personally worked on. And you know, most of the, the teachers of Nile Tiesel here in Egypt worked on along together. You know, they even shared the programs together and the sponsorship of Nile Tiesel and the sponsorship of, uh, of other uh, programs here in Egypt, such as um, uh, Rilu, you know, Rilu Cairo office here in, uh, in Egypt. So let's take them one by one. So first thing is carrying out your mission with your students. So we used Zoom educating session. So when you try to, to, to transfer your students um, immediately from face to face into a virtual learning that they have never been accustomed to, especially if they were young learners, you would find great difficulty in addressing them. So the first thing that you need to do as a flexible teacher is to adapt them and educate them about how to use these technological aids that are going to help them learn the language and learn the programs that you assign to them. This was one way that we used via um, technological aids. So the other one was using Facebook live sessions that we um, used and instead of, uh, um, there is no sound, um, is that familiar with all? Can you hear me? At the last, yeah. carry on, carry yeah, on. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so the Facebook live sessions and here in Egypt, we, um, the Ministry of Education created the Edmodo platform in which students can uh, transfer knowledge and learn from their teachers. They can share virtual classes and they can join these classes. Okay, so for the personal professional development, um, we, during the COVID-19, had um, many things that we done. Um, virtual TESOL International, okay? In international TESOL affiliation and really connect program. So these were the professional development uh, program that um, most of the teachers here in Egypt that uh, adopted during the COVID-19. So we, 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 did not, we, we didn't uh, stop and we did not stay in our home just getting scared of the virus. No, we try to work on our professional development in many aspects. So we attended the virtual TESOL International that was, hold, uh, that was held in July, I think 17, 18, 19, okay? And also the international TESOL affiliation. Um, and, and that international TESOL affiliation, let me tell you something that we shared the session there in this international affiliation. And I'm gonna tell you about them in the next slide. And last but never least, the RILU program, Connect program, the RILU uh, Cairo office organized a Connect program that educate the teachers who here of Egypt to teach the Connect curriculum in a, a communicative approach way uh, via integrating the backward design lesson plan that they integrated with each other, providing many resources, many materials, and many things that you can, that you can use inside their classroom. 
So this was a professional, um, personal professional development. So the voluntary work, that was the most amazing one. So it was charades, coffee nights, entity piece sessions, novice teachers program by Rilo and mentor program. So for the charades, I'm gonna tell you, um, I cut it in short, however, it's a long story. Charade is a program initiated by the Nile Tiesel, uh, the Nile Tiesel here in Egypt, Nile Tiesel Professional Development Chairwoman. Uh, the Charade is a program in which you can create a team of teachers who can act out scenes from plays and novels, you know, stories of um, students from uh, all over educational stages and create it and students can guess what the scene is about. And that charades was adopted by the Nile Tissel affiliation that witnessed the show and liked it very much and invited the team to act out it in the Nile Tissel affiliation. Uh, the next one was the coffee nights that, was, uh, that were organized each Wednesday uh, to discuss uh, educational uh, programs, to discuss educational techniques that you can use inside your classroom during the COVID-19 crisis. The entity based session Nile teacher training program and the novice teacher program. Uh, uh, that was a program created by the mentors of Rilo 2020, you know, to help novice teachers adopt the teaching styles. And last but never least, the mentor program. So after the COVID-19 crisis, right. you must see <laughs> right at the end of the way. <laughs> you see? You thought 10 minutes was easy. It's no. not easy. <laughs> no, that was great, though. I'm sorry. I really hate cutting you off. But no, I'm it's, going it's absolutely okay. I, I reached my last slide. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, no, that was great. And it's really nice. I saw a lot of the work that Relo was doing out there, and that's amazing. Um, I know a lot of the Relos around the world, and they do a great job. So you guys are lucky and blessed to be working with them. But yeah. thanks so much. That was a great presentation. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Rob, for inviting me. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thanks. And we're going to move on to the next speaker. You see, people don't believe me when I say I'm going to cut them off. <laughs> And let's move on to Ahmed. And hey, Marissa. Okay, Ahmed, let's see. We have that one on. And how about the other and share slides on the other one? Okay. Say hi in the meantime, just to make sure uh, I can hear Hi. Hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All so right. So, are you ready to go? Okay. Well, you ready? Because yeah. I'm going to time you. Thank you. Yes, I know. I can see and of mine as well. Okay. All right. Good. Very good. Mine's <laughs> red, though. <laughs> okay. Take it away. So hello everyone, uh, this is Ahmed Farooq. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, teaching literature online, some tips and tricks, okay? So how do you define literature? So it's a body of written work in uh, prose or poetry that has an artistic value. It includes plays, novels, um, short stories, poems, and I'd like to add songs and movies as well. But why, why are we teaching literature? So mainly it uses authentic language, Thus, it's uh, language focused. It's also engaging and uh, motivating for the students. It's real world centered with universal uh, themes. It's culturally enriching as it teach, uh, teaches the central premises of each society. It's about sharing experiences and improving imagination, which lead to uh, the holistic development of uh, the students, okay? So here are some tips while you are teaching online. So first you need to find the right technology because we have lots and lots of things, tools, platforms, you need to select the suitable one for you.
for your uh, environment, you're more aware of it. You need to make the, the most of uh, free online resources. They are there, you can make use of them. You need to set expectations uh, for your students, for their behavior. You know your students, talk to them about the types of uh, activities they are going to do, how often they will do their homework, um, how they will be assessed. You need also to um, build a community. You need to have this sort of rapport with your students. You need to manage your time uh, and you need to collaborate with other teachers. You need to uh, support other teachers. You need to connect with other teachers, exchange ideas, learn from each other. So the flipped classroom. I do believe that it's one of the best ways to teach literature. So uh, in a flipped classroom, you will give your students uh, uh, like a text or a video. They are going to watch at home. And then when they are back to the classroom, they are going to discuss or do more activities. Uh, why are we doing this? Mostly because we are flipping the uh, Plume's taxonomy. We are starting at the creativity evaluation. We are starting with the huts. However, when we're doing it online, so when you're doing the online flipped classroom, you may have to put in um, an in-between stage, uh, by which I mean, okay, so you're going to give your students the text to read or the video, the recording to watch, and then you're going to ask them to work with their colleagues using Facebook or WhatsApp so that they can discuss things. And then in the online class, uh, you can, handle the tricky parts or the, the tough parts they had. So um, here you made it easier for, uh, you made uh, use of your time. Um, one of the great platforms, I do believe it's wonderful. It's uh, the Canvas. Um, I, I do believe that most of you have heard of and maybe you have used it. So it's user friendly. Uh, in the canvas, you can just like design your own course. So whether it was a play, a poem, or um, uh, you know, a story, whatever, you can design your own course with uh, discussions, with tasks. Uh, you can have um, quizzes, assessment, and you can have them do something, and you're commenting on them, and you can follow their progress. So I do believe it's wonderful, easy to handle. I uh, I do think that you can try to check it. And since it's uh, asynchronous, so students might find difficulty connecting with, uh, you know, the internet connection and uh, these sort of problems. So they can work on their own pace. Whenever the internet is okay, they can handle it. So you're helping your students, okay? Um, another tool that I'm sure you have all heard of, uh, Flipgrid. So in Flipgrid, you have, uh, you as a teacher may record a video for your students, maybe a question or something, and then they are going to answer it using other videos. So you might ask them about a character, uh, the author or something like this, and your students are replying through recording videos, other videos, and here it goes. They can comment on each other, they can have discussions. Uh, so I guess it's wonderful. Um, helpful for the students to build their character. They can have their own, um, you know, presentation in short in a short video. So it's not intimidating. It's not so intimidating for them. And I thought that we might uh, connect this to um, the hot seat strategy. Mostly, um, we, we used to have this the hot seat strategy in which you can invite one of the students to uh, sit in front of the classroom as a character, mostly he is a clever one. Uh, so acting as a character or the author or the poet and other students asking him questions and he is answering them. So here we can do it as well. So you might have um, this uh, clever student to act as the, this author or character and then have other students asking him questions, recording uh, these uh, questions on Flipgrid and he's answering them. So it's like an interview or something. So um, moving to the reading theater. So reading theater is a strategy for uh, developing reading fluency. It involves the students in oral uh, reading of parts of a script. So students work in groups. They would uh, read the lines of a play or a poem, something like this. 
but still it's doable online. So how can you do this? Simply, you can put them again in groups. You can assign this part of uh, a text or a play or a poem and ask them, each of them to have one line and they can rehearse using uh, WhatsApp or Facebook uh, rooms so that they can have the final product is similar to the uh, reading theater, which was on a stage. So they moved from on a stage to online. Uh, a wonderful idea that came to me while I was doing this, trailers. You can ask your students even to design their own trailers of a poem or a play so they can have it with a source of, uh, with some, some kind of suspense. So they can each say a line from different parts of the, the novel. This might, this might come at the end, it's up to you. Uh, comics. I think that comics is um, a wonderful way of teaching literature because most of us, most of our students are visual learners. So um, they would love to learn uh, literature through comics. Uh, what you can do here is just like get five or six pictures from the part you're going to teach and do it in a form of jigsaw. And then when the students arrange this part or this picture, you're going to ask them questions. You can use what if scenarios, you know? Uh, so after they have the, the picture arranged, they are going to ask them, what if this uh, doesn't happen or whatever. You can have this jigsawplanet.com. This is a wonderful website for which will help you with uh, Jigsaw. Um, this is a wonderful website, uh, classtools.net. It has lots and lots of tools that would be very helpful for you. I do recommend that you go there and just like try to uh, explore it. I found two tools, I, I, I like them very much. The first one was fake book. Yes, it's fake book, not Facebook. It's like this. You can have, you, you can, if you can see it, I'm not sure it's clear enough, but this is uh, the Facebook of Shakespeare. So you can design it, you can design it. You can have this picture, you can have uh, them, the, the authors, you can have it for a character on, on the play or the story and have this uh, fake book page and students are commenting on whatever he's saying. Another tool I found on, the, on this uh, website, uh, Twister, is it Twitter and Twisted, okay? So where you can have uh, one of the characters just like tweeting things uh, to other people. Um, this website is also helpful. I found it helpful. Maybe you can try it. I hopefully you can just like Google it to prove uh, profs. So you can, as you can see, there are like uh, crossword puzzles, word search games, uh, jigsaw, uh, brain teasers, uh, hangman games. You can design all these games. You can move literature to gamifying. So this can be used as um, like um, a word words or something to make it fun, to make learning fun. And finally, we have the graphic organizers. I do believe that they are very important. You can rely always on graphic organizers like Venn diagram or whatever. Here we have the hero's journey. It's in questions uh, on, you, on the left and on the right, you can find it in the form of uh, graphic organizers. So you may ask your students to do it themselves. Um, you have the quizzes also, can, you can use them online quizzes. Um, Thank you so much, and I hope you can um, make use of what I have said. Uh, you can handle it in a way or another. Thank you, Rob. Nice timing. Very good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> See, it pays to have your own timer. That was great. That was somebody made the comment, um, Amra, I think it was, that it was very interesting because you used very simple things that you could work with and that's yeah. great i think if if you've seen me talk i've been getting um giving a, a lot of problems to teachers who are trying to use complicated technology and thinking that they're teaching i think simpler is better so yeah, great the simpler, and, the better. yep thanks so much for presenting and for being here yeah. I mean, that was great Thank okay you so much. Very good. So now we go off to our next Ahmed. And let's see. Where's our speaker? Is 
Is that me, Rob? Yes, yeah, sorry. Shower, oh. sorry. <laughs> yes, it's okay, Rob. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, um, let me stop sharing, maybe. Slides. Okay. Give me a second, and you should have, you should be able to start your slides. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay. Okay, so sound is great. You all ready to go? Oh uh, yes, sure. You ready for me to cut you off at ten minutes? Uh, well, I have my stopwatch already, uh, so I hope uh, that I'll be uh, finishing on time. Yeah. Great. Well, okay. we're going to be placing bets here on it. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, take it away. Okay, Rob. Thank you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rob, so much. Uh, it's a privilege, really, to be on uh, EFL Talks. Uh, what I'll be doing uh, today is just to take you on a journey through uh, what the professional writing SIG has achieved uh, since its inception in 2017, late, may, maybe late 2016, uh, early 2017. Uh, so I'll just take you uh, through a, uh, on a journey through everything that we've achieved uh, so far. So everything started at this place, which is the uh, University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore County. So we, um, my partner and I, because to, to, to be honest, I'm not the only coordinator of the professional writing SIG. I have another colleague. Uh, he's not here, unfortunately, tonight. Uh, so we, we, we were uh, given a, a grant by the Nile Thiessel to do a professional writing course with the University of Maryland. So it was a real eye opener. And after doing the course, of course, our, our mission was to uh, spread uh, the knowledge. Uh, so uh, we start with uh, our first event. It took us uh, maybe uh, a few months in order to get everything in order. So we started in April 2017 uh, with, the, with our first event. It was the, uh, our W event. And this one was in the, um, in the campus of the AUC downtown. So we had a, a big event of four different topics. So we had what effective profession writing is, and then avoiding plagiarism, and writing PowerPoint presentations, and publishing articles. Uh, the event took five hours. And because my, friend, my colleague and I were super nervous, so we, we asked two uh, colleagues who are experienced presenters to, uh, to, to, to join us. Uh, so, so the, uh, the pressure and the nervousness was really divided among four people instead of two. So the event went really very, very well. And, uh, and it gave us, of course, confidence to, uh, that we are uh, on the right track. Um, I've, I've really collected all the, the events of the, of the Nile Thesis Conference, the, um, January 2017, 18, and 19, in just one slide. Uh, so you will see that we, we use some catchy titles for, for our presentations because, of course, we are under the Nile, umbrella of the Nile Thiessel, so we have to participate in the conference like yearly. So we, we use some catchy, uh, uh, maybe, titles for our events because writing is a very difficult, uh, maybe, skill to acquire. So uh, we needed to attract the people uh, um, one way or another. So in 2018, we called it Combat the Fear of Professional Writing. We were talking to ourselves, by the way, before our audience. And 2019, we said, uh, let's call it Tailor Your Writing to Match Your Needs. And in 2020, uh, we've just focused on vocabulary. So we give a very nice uh, event or presentation about mind your vocabulary uh, use. Uh, in 2018, uh, we, uh, we, we stepped into maybe an uncharted territory, which is Azhar University. So for you who don't know Azhar University, uh, it's an Islamic university. So students um, really, uh, are, it's mandatory for them to study uh, Islamic uh, subjects. Of course, in addition to medicine, commerce, engineering, uh, and, and so on. So of course, uh, the, the level of security is, uh, is really very, very tight. It's not easy to, uh, to access Azhar, Azhar University. So we gave two events uh, on two consecutive uh, weeks, one in the, uh, in, in the male dormitory, and the second one was in the female dormitory because they have the policy of uh, gender segregation. Uh, so of course, we were addressing un undergrads. So, so we said, okay, let's give them a topic like effective research writing. 
and also how to write a CV and a personal statement. It was very successful. And the two hours were, were really full of uh, questions and, and, and activities and the level of engagement was really high. Uh, next, we started heading towards Upper Egypt. So we went directly into the heart of, of Upper Egypt and we went to Asyut. It's a massive city uh, in the heart of, uh, of Upper Egypt and a very large population. And it's, it's, it's the hub really. I mean, uh, a lot of events are held in Asyut because it really serves a lot of uh, governorates that surround Asyut. So uh, uh, we were actually, we're not that free to choose the topics. We gave them a list of the topics. So, so, so they said, okay, we just need something uh, to, uh, to, to teach uh, teachers how to, uh, how to write. And again, how, how to teach writing. So that's why, as you can see, the title is Sharpen Your Writing learning and teaching. So how you as a teacher uh, need to write and need to sharpen your writing. And again, how to sharpen your students' uh, writing. And we, we invited uh, one, one presenter along with us. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was very, very nice. And the level of hospitality was unbelievable. And next we went to Banha, uh, a very, very ser ser serene city, uh, quite serene in the, uh, in the northern part of, of Cairo. It's just like an, uh, an, uh, an hour and a half from Cairo through the new highway. Uh, again, we, uh, we had the same event, uh, Sharpen Your Writing Skills. We, we built on the success of the previous one. So uh, we, we, we repeated the same topic, but definitely with a different audience. So all of them were teachers in the Ministry of, of Education. And uh, yeah, so again, the, the level of engagement was really high. I remember that we, uh, we, uh, we put uh, the attendees in, in groups uh, gender-based, so very high competition between males and females. I still remember one female teacher was very, very enthusiastic and uh, she, she was really <laughs> very active with us. So we gave them uh, advanced academic writing mistakes. They, they requested this, uh, th this topic. And again, writing effective PowerPoint presentations because this topic helps them in, in, in compiling PowerPoint presentations uh, for the teaching in classes. Uh, well, after that, in 2019, August 2019, we went to Deraya University in, in Minya. Again, Minya is in the heart of Upper Egypt. Well, a little bit further to the south, uh, but again, a very quiet place. And we went to uh, Deraya University, a fresh campus, um, totally new. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, the crowd was really huge. It was organized by the Regional English Language Office. It was the first educational hub. Uh, so yeah, so the event was very, very well announced for, and uh, yeah, so the marketing part was done really very, very well. So our topics were demythologizing, uh, demythologizing, yeah, sorry, the academic writing task of IELTS, uh, because again, uh, a lot of them were really applying for IELTS, and uh, the advanced academic writing mistakes, uh, we, we delivered that as well. Uh, and again, in 2019, it seems that the profession writing SIG was, SIG was really prolific in 2019. I've just discovered that while I was preparing this slideshow. Uh, so it seems, yeah, that in 2019, we've done a lot of things and uh, I've been to places that I've never been to and I've never even dreamed to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to go to those places. So thanks to the Nile Tiesel and to the profession writing SIG. So we went to Mansoura, there was a symposium organized by, by, by the Ministry of Education, uh, the Mansoura branch. Uh, Mansoura, again, is a city, as you can see in the map, it's in the heart of Delta. So again, uh, quite urbanized, uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, nice people, very kind, hospitality is uh, beyond imagination. So we had, um, we had a great time, as you can see. Uh, this is my picture with one of, the, with one of my colleagues who was really uh, kind enough to help me with the with technology. Yeah. So uh, again, I repeat the topic. I was alone. In fact, I gave just a one hour presentation. I was alone. My partner couldn't make it. So again, I repeated the topic of demythologizing. Now I pronounce it well. Uh, the academic writing task of IELTS. Um, I didn't have like, a big crowd. The rooms were a little bit small. Uh, but again, I, I just tried my best to, uh, to make it uh, engaging and uh, yeah, to give people as much benefit as possible. Uh, in, uh, in, in the end of 2019, uh, we had our first mini course. Uh, it was uh, in the Amid East, downtown. 
and we call it Write with Confidence. So we gave them a main course uh, about the, uh, the, the writing process, pre, during, and post writing. Um, the uh, organizing reading was a little bit challenging. Uh, we, our, our emails were really overwhelmed with requests to attend, but eventually, as you can see in the pictures, we just had a handful of teachers. Uh, but again, I mean, it was really uh, uh, beneficial because the number was manageable. And as you can see, the teachers' productions uh, on, on the walls uh, of that hall. And finally, COVID, I will not call it COVID-19, I will call it COVID-2020, because all of us were really, oh, the whole world was taken aback by this event. So everything was online. We had three different online events. So these are just some titles of the online events we had. And we invited, of course, people with us because we were tired and exhausted. We needed some fresh blood. So we invited people along to present with us. So these, just a sample of uh, some of the events that we had, okay? Rob, according to my stopwatch, uh, 10 minutes, five seconds. Uh, is, is that right? Uh, am I wrong? I don't know. You're spot on. Okay, yeah. it's wonderful. Oh gosh, I was I was quite nervous, Rob. Yes, but thank you. I made it. Demythologizing or demythologizing. Demythologizing. It's a new <laughs> one for me. I'll have to work on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Rob. I enjoyed. That was great. Thanks so uh, much, David. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. I'll, I'll stop sharing now. Oh, okay. I should, yes, okay, done. Great, all right, now, let's see. We have to turn on a couple of cameras. Um, give, bear with me for a second while I find our next speaker. Where are you, Amani? <laughs> I'll find you yet. Hang on. And while we're waiting, um, just so you know, if you can tell all your friends and family, have them um, watch the recordings. If they go to EFLtalks.com, um, give me a couple of weeks, and then in a few weeks, I'll have the recordings up, and they can watch all the recordings, and they can watch all 550 of the recordings after a while. Okay, Amani, I have both of yours turned on now. Hello, Rob. Can you just assign me as a co-host with the other account? Um, I, I, Amani Sophie. Let's see. Let's see. All right, which one? Say something again. I've got you. All right, unmute yourself. Which is the other account that you're in on? It's okay now. <laughs> okay, good. Hello, right. hello. You have both of them. All right. Um, which one are we going to see you on? <laughs> uh, many softwares. That's now. Uh, is it clear? No, well, the sound is, but I don't see any picture okay. yet. Ah, there we go. Oh, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, because there is a virtual background. Well, actually, it looks like a virtual <laughs> foreground. Um, <laughs> you have San Francisco <laughs> Bridge in front of your I'm face. A hologram now. <laughs> wow, that's a cool effect. How do you do yes, that? Just, just San Francisco Bridge. <laughs> Is that you okay, I just want to tell you, I'm so sorry because uh, I'm just not at home. I'm just on my way back from work and I'm talking to you from the car. 
so I hope that everything goes well. Okay. Um, you're going to run your slides? Yes, sure. Um, <laughs> Let okay. me begin sharing my slides yeah. right now. Yeah, who knows that? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, hang on a second. Don't start yet. Okay. All right, go into the slide slide presentation mode. On the okay, PowerPoint. I'm doing this now. Is okay. that okay? Yep, and now I've got your video okay. pin, so I'm going to give you 10 minutes on the clock and take it away. Okay. And here we go. <laughs> uh, first of all, I called my talk teachers in action using podcasts to enhance students' language skills. Why did I use podcasts? Because they are available in almost most mobile phones have podcasts. So they are something that teachers and students as well can get access to so easy. Now, what is a podcast? A podcast is something that is so similar to, let's say, uh, a talk radio, for example, but they are more personalized. Why? Because you can choose whatever you want to listen to through a, pod, uh, a podcast, but on radio, there are just scheduled programs. With podcasts, it's totally different. You can choose to listen to whatever you need to, whenever you want to. And also it, uh, it has series of, uh, you know, uh, episodes related to many topics and they focus on the spoken or the audio aspect and they are also focusing on certain themes. What are the topics that can be dealt in with uh, podcasts? First, they deal with things related to or topics related to business, maybe comedy, education, health, uh, TV and films, kids and family, and this is important, news and politics, society and culture, and culture is also important for teachers. Uh, we have maybe science and medicine, we have sports, which students do love. We have technology, which we are apt to follow. These days, we have games and hobbies, we have music, and we have also health of the cook. And this of uh, the, the paint because it has many things related to art and cooking and so on. So there are varieties of topics that suit many people, many ages, and many interests. What are the types of podcasts? Basically, we have three types of podcasts. The first of all is that uh, the authentic podcasts, which are available for all people, they are not aimed for a certain thing. For example, they are not aimed to be educational, but we can often use them as a rich source for our uh, students in the classes. They are genuine sources of real life language and situations. They can be used, but especially with uh, uh, high level students, they cannot be used with young learners. The second type of podcasts are the teacher podcasts, which are as apparent from the title, they are produced by teachers. Why do they produce such podcasts? Simply because this helps them in their classrooms and with their own students. Uh, so it means that a teacher podcast can be adopted to the level of the students, which we as teachers teach and can be adopted by any teacher, any teacher else to suit um, the level of the students he or she Teachers. So this means that teacher podcast can be just prepared as a way of uh, supporting the age and the level of the students in the class. The third type of podcasts is, as we see in this picture, students podcasts, which are podcasts created by the students themselves and pre produced by them. 
why do they produce such a podcast? This will be simply in response uh, to, for example, a question or a topic that the teacher asks them uh, to deal with or to write about, and the teacher helps them to produce this podcast. Okay, it can be about culture, it can be about their own lives, and it simply can be a part of learning as it can be a PBL or a project-based learning. What are the benefits of podcasting? First of all, we have student engagement. Because when you ask the students to whether to listen to a podcast or to create a podcast themselves, this means that they will be totally engaged, whether in person or in groups. Also, it helps them to improve reflective thinking because they listen to some, something, they think about it, and then they reflect. Also, it uh, enhances something related to STEAM education because it includes many topics that we can integrate, also improves the 21st century skills and teaches the four C's. What are the different skills that podcasts enhance? As we see in the pictures, they are listening, speaking, and writing. So there are many skills that podcasts can enhance. First of all, it enhances the listening skills because students listen to authentic podcasts, to podcasts by their own teachers or other teachers. So they listen to the language in, um, in a context that differs totally from that which is taught in the classroom. It teaches them speaking and they can speak easily because they will speak about something that they heard in the podcast or they listened to in the podcast and also something that is so interesting to them. It enhances their writing abilities. How? Because when I listen and speak, the teacher can change this. It can change this into a writing activity. So he can, he or she can give the students some uh, questions or uh, about things related to the podcast and then they can write about it. For example, they will uh, listen for something related to uh, a journey and um, maybe and uh, the USA and they can write about it. So this helps them to enhance the, the writing skills. Also, it can enhance their storytelling abilities, the way they collaborate, media literacy, increases their technological abilities and their presentation skills, as well as their information literacy. How can teachers use podcasts to create active most beneficial? It can be used in both listening comprehension quizzes and listening comprehension discussions. You as teachers can ask them to listen to a certain podcast and try to to find some answers to questions that you will give them post listening. And if we use it as a comprehension discussion, you can give them some questions like who speaks, uh, what are they speaking about? Um, why do they speak about this thing? Where do they speak? So you um, just enhance their critical thinking abilities and their listening abilities. And this can be done whether in pairs or in small groups. Also, there is an activity that I did like, write a letter to the podcaster. So you can write a letter for the podcaster asking him or her, why did you write about this? And uh, what if you add a certain idea to your podcast, it might be better. So this encourages our students to think and to speak. There are some different activities for students to do by themselves without the help of the teacher. They can have an audio tour. I, as a teacher, can assign them to do something as a homework. For example, you have an audio tour. You listen about uh, something related to a journey or another place, and you can talk about it. You can explore culture about 
other nations, you can uh, help to, um, for example, ask them to talk or to listen to, to podcasts about current if about this. You can also ask them to bring story to life. You can ask them to listen to a certain podcast about a certain story and then they can act this in the classroom by themselves. Oh, also, they can listen to a podcast about a book and they can write a book review. So all of this can be done as a homework or a group work inside the classroom. And this helps us to achieve the point about PBL. What are the best, the tips whenever you choose a podcast, just keep it short. Shorter is always better. And before choosing a podcast, listen to it. Analyze the content because you have to choose something which is suitable to the culture of your students, to their age, and also to their language level. And before uh, assigning using podcasts for your students, just think very well. How are you going to handle this? What are you going to do before? while and after listening and i hope that i am on Great. time and a big thank you <laughs> thank you very much well i i decided to give you an extra 15 seconds because of traffic um i'm very impressed <laughs> you're really a great multitasker you're talking you're showing slides and driving at the same time amazing i'm <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the car I know. Amani, thanks, thanks so much. Thank a lot. That was great. Bye now. Thank a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay, so let's see. We're going to move on to our next speaker. And let me just get everything set here. And our next speaker is, I'm going to try, Reda. How'd I do? Reda. I'm Abu here. Hassan. I'm using, yes. Okay. Reda Abu Hassan. How is oh. that? Red al Akhdar, just like that. Red al Akhdar, which is green in Arabic. Red al Akhdar. Oh, okay. That's the family name. You have two Redas, Rob, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, how are you? <laughs> how are you? So who would you like us who would you like to start, Rob? Um I Reda. guess you because I have your next Abu Hassan. Oh okay. Sorry, Reda. <laughs> okay. Yes, Reda, go ahead. Go ahead, next. of course, my dear. But, but but it's it's great he could say the name now, so <laughs> Oh, okay. At least we have the yeah. head right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Fine, go yeah. ahead, please. All right. So if you can bring up your slides. Okay. And we're just waiting for him going to, okay. So are you ready to go? Yes, sure. All right, so I've got 10 minutes. So and... first of all, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening from the beautiful Egypt. Uh, I'm Reda Abul Hassan, the Nile Tisil uh, president. And uh, it is such a great pleasure to be here today among this wonderful group of educators to talk about Nile Tisil and as an association that I'm really proud to belong to and to tell you how Nile Tiesel has been able to connect and support teachers. Well, uh, in fact, Nile Tiesel is a story that is 25 years old. And uh, it all started when a group of uh, educators led by Dr. Dina Borai and Dr. Magda Lawrence thought of establishing this organization to become a platform for teachers to voice their needs and their interests and to find chances of professional development for free. In fact, everything that you see happening in Nile Tiesel is just the effort of some passionate, enthusiastic 
uh, and very dedicated professionals and uh, lovely educators. This year, we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Nile Tiesel. Nile Tiesel, throughout these 25 years, has been able to reach out to teachers all over Egypt. Uh, Ahmed Chalabi, my colleague, has been telling you about the professional writing special interest group and how they traveled a lot across Egypt. These are pictures from different events all over Egypt where we were able through our face-to-face -face events to go to teachers where they are. Our uh, annual international conference has always attracted teachers from all over the world and has provided them uh, a chance to network and to attend workshops, talks, panels that provide them with the development, the knowledge and the skills that they are looking for and to communicate and connect with other fellow educators who share their thoughts, worries, pains, and achievements. And to be able to connect teachers from all over the world, we get some wonderful help from uh, our fellow or sister uh, associations. We are affiliated to TESOL International, IATEFL, Africa TESOL, TESOL Spain, TESOL Greece, Libya TESOL, the New York State TESOL, TESOL Kuwait and Max TESOL. And uh, this really gives us a wonderful chance to connect and support teachers all over the world. Now, when COVID-19 uh, hit the world, the Nile TESOL team uh, really observed for some time and then they started to develop a plan. They saw the silver lining um, and they were able to find um, a way to help teachers. They planned a year full of activity where they were able to connect teachers, to support teachers who simply found themselves in such a horrible, awkward situation with the long uh, months of the lockdown. Our professional development committee, led by my wonderful friend, Mrs. Hanet Hamis, was able to support teachers from all around the world, not only from Egypt. And they started by providing the coffee nights, which Mr. Abdel Alti told you about, a very informal setting where teachers grab a cup of coffee and uh, chat and talk and discuss topics of interest. Um, they also had four debates this year, and they discussed topics and questions of interest for teachers and uh, things that really worried teachers. The PD committee also had the charades. They had four charades. And again, Mr. Abdelati told you how the charades are interesting chances for not only learning, but also entertainment for teachers. And very, uh, we're very proud that our charades was asked or invited to have a rerun at TESOL International Affiliates event. The charades crew uh, have done a wonderful job. You must also know that we have nine special interest groups active at Nile TESOL. Uh, we have um, a special interest group for testing, evaluation and assessment, another one for teaching English to young learners, another one for teaching uh, teacher education, we have a learning technologies special interest group, the professional writing special interest group, which Mr. Ahmed Chalabi told you about. We have um, the special interest group for English um, uh, inclusive education and English for specific purposes. And recently we have two more SIGs that have joined the research SIG. Uh, which is led by Mrs. Ghed al Akhdar, Ms. Ghed al Akhdar, who is going to be speaking after me, and the Teaching Literature Special Interest Group. This wonderful group of volunteers has been able to run 24 online events this year. They were able to provide three online mini courses where attendees could achieve uh, a certificate. They also started the habit of, ha of having a topic for discussion every week online on Facebook. We had 60 speakers presenting in our events and we were attended by 1,630 educators throughout the period of COVID-19. So I think these people were really able to help teachers connect 
and to support teachers. On another level, our uh, International Relations Committee was able, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, my screen was cut out. I'll be right back. Rob, am, am I here? Can you see the screen? Yeah, you're still here. I don't know why your screen went out, but now okay, you're back. I'll I'll bring it back immediately. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm here. So internationally, I was speaking about the International Relations Committee. They were able to sign some memoranda of understanding with Libya TESOL, with Mex TESOL, and with TESOL Kuwait. And through these um, memoranda of understanding, we were able to share and work with these TESOLs, uh, again, to support teachers. We were able to provide help to some newly established TESOL associations in the Middle East and uh, in Africa. We held some joint online events with Mex TESOL and TESOL Kuwait. And our latest news is that the Nile TESOL leaders will be participating as featured and plenary speakers at the Mex TESOL online convention in October. Now, uh, with everything that is happening in Nile TESOL, I can just ask teachers to stay connected to us, stay supported. We have a lot to give and we are full of enthusiasm and passion to help teachers all over the world, not only in Egypt. Um, if, if you don't know how to find us, we have the Nile TESOL website, www.niletesil.org. And you can also find us on Facebook under the same name. And just remember that we are all there, always there for you. Thank you very much, Rob. I think I've taken less than my time. Well, you have, but that's okay. And it'll give me time to talk. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> first, happy anniversary. Thank you. Congrats on 25 years. I'm celebrating my 25th year also <laughs> of life. Who's, who's laughing? <laughs> my, I'm laughing. That's my 25th year as a teacher, by the way. <laughs> no, it's my 25th year of life. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah, I just look old. No, I'm kidding. No, but that's great. And, you know, I have to say that um, since we've been talking and I've been talking with Hannah, you guys are busier than I am. It's like, it seems every week you have something going on, which is great. Yes. And um, I'm very impressed with all the things that you've been putting on. Um, you know, everybody is trying to do one event in a year and you know you you guys are doing one event every other week i think it's yeah. well i i can tell you we have um, um a wonderful team these are people that are really amazing they it's like they give it their all it's they're very very passionate and when you think that they're volunteers and that everything yeah. they provide is free of charge it yeah. makes me uh like uh hold my hat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, it, this is a volunteer thing for me, of course, and, you know, it's, um, yeah. I also work with, I'm on the committee for the IHF OBSIG, and uh, uh -huh. it, it's a lot of work. People don't realize the yes. amount of work that you're doing, and, you know, I appreciate what you're doing because I understand how much work it is. Yes. If the people out there only understood I wish they would get involved more to help out. So I anybody wish out there, contact Reda. Well, yeah, I'm here and the team is here. And and I really thank you for this opportunity to that you let us show people what we're doing. And I'm I'm really proud of what you're doing too. As you said, you you, you don't really understand how much work un, unless you're doing something similar. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much again. And we're going to see you in a couple of weeks, I think, right? Uh, you have another event coming up in October. Is that correct? Um, I have the, the, the Max Diesel thing coming up. I'm participating okay. in Max Diesel. For Nile Diesel, we have an event coming up every week, as you said. Yeah, good. Well, I think there's something on the 9th and 10th. I have a note here to myself. Uh, I, I, uh, well, we're still working on that. 
Great. Okay. Well, okay. I hope to see it. Thank you, Robert. Right. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for everybody. Great. Okay. Now we go to the other Reda. And Reda. Yes. Hello, hey. Rob. Hello. Hello. This is me. So this oh. is Reda Al-Akhdar. Okay. And let's see. So do you have um, your slides on a different account? Uh, I have my slides here. So instead of uh, multitasking, I just like switch the videos. I just wish to welcome everybody to the presentation. It's very short. And I'm going to go through the culture of support and how important is it for new teachers. So I just like switch off my uh, video and maybe play my screen. So I, I for the um, share my screen here for the slides. Okay. Okay, so I hope you have it here. Okay. Okay, here it goes. Okay, great. All right, so 10 minutes, take it away. So is it clear like that? Yeah. You have my screen good. now? That's good like that. Okay, so it's steps to construct support among teaching teams. Okay. The outline of the presentation, how teaching teams work, common problems among teaching teams, teacher support, and constructing support among teaching teams. How they usually work is that teachers, they work in big teams and they focus on the textbooks and the final exams. The state of nature being, they focus on student performance. And sometimes they would teach for the test because they are sometimes very big teams, they, they hardly meet. And the meetings become unifying action plans. They're geared towards student production. The follow-up on teacher skill or development or even teacher performance becomes minimum. So this is what the organization does or this is what schools, most schools and universities do. Uh, they communicate around student performance and they leave out their own self-development as if they were not part of the educational game. The challenges among the teaching teams are their development does not come as a priority uh, on the organizational list. And the workload, exam times, they become very stressful for novice teachers because sometimes they can't see the tides coming. Uh, sometimes teachers would internalize blame and guilt, and this would lower or downplay their passion for the job. Uh, the other problem is sometimes they do have little, little achievements that they don't get seen. So uh, we know that teacher development is all about belonging to the, ki the kind uh, of community they get. Uh, it's the kind of routines they develop. It's like um, this, is, this is what makes teachers play long. They give them sustained energy and they give them sustained passion for the job. So growth opportunity is important. And one of them would be having the kind of support, the kind of support that the Nile Tiesel was there. It's the background uh, ambition and goal. It's like we have the Relo, we have so many other teacher support platforms and they're all developed with this in mind. We want to support the teacher. We don't want it to be a lonely game. So examples of teacher support would be to construct the space for activities and to construct class sets for sharing activities among the teachers themselves, celebrating steps for improvement and journaling challenges collectively. Uh, the RESEG, which is um, the research group, the special interest group, uh, I co-lead with Dr. Karim Sahati. We construct a space for teachers' activities, but actually they're related to research, related to access to knowledge, whether teachers they come from university or school background. Uh, of course, we belong to the Nile Cecil and we, uh, we enjoy the other services like the uh, coffee club nights and um, the PD events and the other events that are supported by the uh, Nile Cecil. Um, this gives space for people to share their concerns and to share the activities they do in the classroom and even would help them um, motivate them to pr process their own uh, development and maybe get a diploma or take a degree. Uh, joining teachers' clubs, setting a reading uh, 
reading settings, reading corners, uh, painting corners, something like this. These are examples of what teachers can do in order to get support. Uh, construct class sets like ready-made lesson plans, ready-made activities, sharing successful, successful activities in the classroom. Using flowcharts sometimes to manage semester deadlines. This is a very interesting technique that sometimes no teachers don't know about. So they get to plan the semester, they know the hot, the intense uh, weeks where they have a lot of marking and a lot of examination going on, and then they plan the writing accordingly. Uh, they know where in the gaps of the semester they'll be writing. So uh, for novice teachers, this is an important technique. Otherwise, they're going to drop out from uh, working, uh, from writing. They would consider that uh, an extra load for them. Um, celebrating the little steps of improvement has been one of the most um, effective strategies that people would use. So sometimes when they stop giving a lot of activities or uh, using uh, some of the uh, successful techniques they come around, uh, teachers are always encouraged to do a little celebration. So the celebration here can be sharing a space of visibility by giving a presentation on a little achievement, uh, maybe sharing the process of their work, uh, whether on social media or in the group of the teachers, uh, trying to uh, maybe come up with a visual that would, uh, sh that would help them, like the achievement uh, book or the yearbook, something like a little page for the teacher and what they have already done. It's, it's not just the students, the teachers are growing as well and they are part of the educational game. Um, the last point would be to journal the challenges collectively. So sometimes teachers can develop a portfolio, uh, they can de develop like a unit plan, maybe a couple of sheets where they uh, jot down all the questions and the concerns that they had throughout this course. So other people would come and teach the same course again, whether they are the same people the next term or the next year, or other people who are going to do the same thing, they would learn, they would share things, they would, uh, they would have maybe uh, worked some improvement plans on the questions that they have developed. Could you see, like a contingency plan, like uh, activities that people can share in order to motivate the students. Uh, so uh, collective journaling actually uh, works. And of course, the teacher can have their own portfolios where they keep the notes for the classes and also the little celebrations and little visuals and maybe pictures of their classrooms and pictures, uh, the, the, the things that are going to motivate them uh, and, and keep them on top of the game and passionate ambitious and, and happy to give. So considering support for teachers, it contributes to teacher development through building a culture of sharing and resilience. And it makes the rhythm of the academic year predictable for teachers, so they handle work intensity better. They share responsibility and coordinate the reaction to external challenges, like for example, online teaching during the quarantine, um, uh, teams that already have uh, easy communication and uh, strong support systems. They were uh, the happiest doing the quarantine thing and they would take their uh, meetings uh, online easily. So sometimes when you have someone struggling or you're not sure about how things would go, they would really, really benefit from uh, the energy and drive of the team. Um, and of course, we have uh, appreciation uh, and visibility for the little steps of achievement. Uh, I'm calling this little steps because we usually have uh, a stride of one semester or one academic year. So whatever teacher can accomplish in that time, uh, that would be something to celebrate, of course. Okay. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, okay, I, I think that was shorter than the time. Uh, okay. Are you still there? Ah, uh, we're here. Yes. Why don't you here I am, your camera then. so we can at least say goodbye to you? <laughs> okay. Yes, of course. Let's see you. So. Okay, coming Peace. back here. Yes. Great. Well, that was great. Very informative, and yeah, thank you. went smoothly. I'm I'm curious. Um, what kind of cell phone are you using? Uh, it's some sort of Xiaomi. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, some it, sort of Xiaomi. 
Xiaomi Redmi Pro, something like that. Uh huh. Okay. No, it worked well. It, usually we have a lot of problems with them, but that worked great. So, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. <laughs> and thank you, Rob. And, and thank you for the things that you've been running. I mean, I did some research on the EFL talks, I watched uh, some of them. Very nice, very informative, and global in voice. It has diversity. It has equity. It has many people from all colors and backgrounds. It's beautiful and ambitious, and I I, I really love to be part of it. Thank you, Rob, for calling uh, on us. Well, yeah. Thank you, and thanks for being a part of this. And now thank you're you. one of us. So, thanks again. Great. Okay. Okay. So, now let's move on to our next speaker, which is Hannah. And Hannah is going to share your screen. And if you can turn on your camera. There you are. Hello. Well, thank you so much for organizing this. Um, <laughs> you know, I know how much work it is to chase people down and to get people to come. So, and the fact that you stepped in at the last minute to do a presentation is even greater. Thank you. I mean, it's a pleasure and honor. I mean, I've been like, you know, wanting to be part of it from the very beginning, but I thought like if I were to choose like, you know, 10 speakers, I'd better choose fellow colleagues. I wanted to grab them all in. So anyways, it turned out to be this way and I'm, I'm really so excited about it really. Well, me too. And um, so without further ado, you have those up. I have the timer going and okay. yes. Okay, I'm starting mine first, okay. Okay, ready to go. Got it. Take it away. L okay, ladies and gentlemen, a real pleasure and honor to be with you today. I'm sharing memoirs of a roving reporter. Okay, what are these memoirs and who is that reporter? Okay, let's find out together. To start with, let me just talk about the purpose of my talk tonight. Uh, now, this is a story about how a moment of suffering has turned around and become a moment to celebrate success. This is a story on how someone can connect, develop, and support, or receive support when things can go really bad on a personal or professional level. Now, let me just give you a little bit of context on what I am talking about. When? I'm talking about 2010. Those were the best of times and the worst of times. Where? Both face-to-face -face and online. What? Well, I was uh, overwhelmed with continuous professional development opportunities back in time and all for free. I couldn't miss anything despite having, having a, a full-time job, a very interesting one, and a, a, a job that kept my hands full. Well, then what? At the same time, I came across a contest, I mean, a contest, a competition for writing. And I thought, well, that is something I really need to sign up for. Um, I wrote an entry, an essay, uh, about an event that really blew my mind away. And I have the title here, Virtual Encounters of the First Kind. Interestingly, I won and, okay, I was asked to travel to a conference. Uh, it was in the UK, Harrogate 2010, IATFL. However, I wasn't up to travel. I wasn't feeling very well health-wise. And it was very difficult for me to actually make that decision. I was uh, actually asked not to do that, just to ensure I am safe. However, I decided to, to 
take the risk and travel on, on, on my own. However, okay, I couldn't just do it all by myself. I had to connect. I did try to connect to people, to professionals who could really support me um, in every single way from the British Council Egypt, because I actually missed my appointment for a visa. They issued an instant visa just for me, an exception. Um, they handled the ticket, they handled transportation to the airport. I found someone um, waiting for me, a fellow colleague actually from Russia taking me uh, to the station, train station, where I actually had to go and find my way around, okay, the conference. I became a roving reporter. My job was to write. My job was to attend and write reports, type them up, post them online on uh, the conference website. Um, that actually was a moment where I developed by daily blogging, However, keep in mind that was the age before smartphones were there. And it was very difficult doing that, especially when you were given a broken laptop. So you had to do it sometime later. It was a little bit tricky, but I did it. And I saw volunteer work uh, of professional teachers in action, very supportive indeed. And I did really uh, felt safe and supported all the time. Now, that was actually one last report I wrote on my way back after this trip. I gave it the title Afterthoughts about Harrogate. It's posted on my blog there. I'm on my way to Bradford Airport in Leeds thinking it's been a memorable visit. Despite the cloudy weather on my final day, I can't complain since I've been promised cloudy, windy, and rainy over the past week. And by the way, that was the weather for forecast. Still, I got two sunny days as a token of friendship from the town of Harrogate. Really enjoyable. The town does have this friendly atmosphere. People are warm with smiley faces wherever you go. It's taken me only one day to feel at home. I panic on the bus when I realize that the 50 pound notes aren't accepted. Oh my, I have no change for my ticket to the airport. I'm bogged down with my luggage with only 15 minutes to find a solution. I get off the bus running down to a small cafe, bumping into chairs and apologizing the shop assistant gives me change for a 50, giving me all the change she has. She doesn't even ask me to buy a cookie, which I was ready to do anyway. Goodbye, Harrogate. I'm going to miss you. The end. And that takes us to the very beginning. I'm done. Well, wow, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Better fast than overtime. <laughs> well, now, now you have three minutes. You can talk. How did you like Harrogate? Well, it wasn't like, you know, um, one of those like, you know, I think it was an industrial city. So uh, not like, you know, uh, London, not like when I went to Glasgow with all greenery, but still, I really liked the visit. Not necessarily in winter, of course, that was like wintry time. It felt like it. Um, but still, I really felt people were nice. Interesting. I haven't been there yet. We're, we're supposed to go next year for Ayatefel, so. For some reason, they choose it frequently as a venue for the convention, IATEFL. That's where their offices are. <laughs> I see, I see, because I see it every like other year or something, yeah. Yeah, it's been um, 
2015, 20, I think it was 2010 was the last one there, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah. again, I really want to thank you. You know, you've done a wonderful job getting some wonderful speakers here and, you know, it's not easy and I really appreciate it. And also I may as well, as long as I have you, it'll be commercial time. Um, five years today is up on the screen. I want to remind everybody that next Sunday we are celebrating EFL Talks fifth anniversary to the day and to celebrate World Teachers Day. It's when I started. Um, five years ago, I started from nothing and started with 50 presenters and 50 EFL talkers. And um, I was going to go with 20. We're now up to about 47, including yourself. So we're looking forward to seeing so you again so. next, thank you. next Sunday. And thank you again for all of this. Thank you. So, Thank you for uh, having us. <laughs> oh, it's, it's my pleasure. And let me ask you while I have you. So next we're going to show Maha and then Mawa, correct? Maha Marwa. Okay, great. Can we make an exception if you don't mind? Can we have Aula? Oh, sure. Let me, I, I was actually thinking about that. And all right, give me a second. Why don't you stay with me while I... I have I to am. find her. She's yeah. in here twice, I believe, right? Yes. And uh, uh, both are Ola Abu Al Az. Ola yeah. Abu Al Az. Yes. I, here's one. Um, okay, we've got one of you, and we've got both of you now. Okay, so Ola, you can <clears throat> turn on your mic and camera, please. Hi, everyone. Hi, there you Hi. are. How are you? I'm great, and you. Now, are you going to show the slides on the other? Um, uh, no, I mean, I won't because I, I lost my connection on my computer. So I tried from my phone and I kept my phone just in case. <laughs> okay. Do you want me All to right. lock off my phone? No, that's okay. That's um, okay. so you want me to, you want me to bring up your slides? I'll share yours. Yeah. If you don't mind. Okay. And give me a second. Sure. So I can close everything down and get to them. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, one moment. So why don't you sing a song while we're um, <laughs> well, I'm not very good at singing, just dancing. What do you think, honey? <laughs> the dance, the dance, the dance. Okay. The dance, yeah. Well, the closest I get to dancing is I'm in Gdansk. All right. <laughs> a bad joke. I'm These sorry. days I started up my, I restarted up my salsa classes again. I went back to my salsa classes a month ago. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah. I keep them running. Hang on. Okay. So can you see your slides? Yes, I can. And let me just, I want to pin your video. Let me get okay. back to it. Just Fine. so it show up on the recording. All right. All right. And so when you're ready to move, just say next slide, please. Okay. okay. Fine. So, uh, shall I put my away. timer on? Yes. Yep. On. All right. <laughs> I start now. Let's go. Okay. 
Yep. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you all tonight. And uh, I'd like to say hi to all my colleagues and uh, uh, fellow educators. Uh, it's long time no see everyone, but uh, it's a good opportunity to see all of you tonight. Um, my talk today is very short, as Rob mentioned and Hane, and I'm going to talk about the back to school teacher development plans after COVID-19. Um, uh, let's move Rob to the first slide. Uh, I'll take you through a very short journey of my career uh, as a teacher trainer or as a professional development um, uh, trainer. I was very fortunate to be with organizations that valued professional development. I've been involved in the field for a very long time, and I guess I started uh, late uh, 2006, early 2007, um, and that gave me access to many um, peers who were very uh, willing uh, 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 or who, were who willingly shared their knowledge and expertise and gave me more tools to help improve myself as a teacher trainer at that time. Um, I was also fortunate to inspire and help teachers to improve their skills um, and in turn boost uh, students' outcomes in the classrooms as well. I also learned that uh, learning uh, can take place in formal or, in, or informal settings. And I learned how to deliver highly effective PD um, sessions to teachers uh, wherever I work or wherever I volunteer to work with Nine Tiesel, uh, Rilo Cairo, and so many other um, uh, venues and platforms. Um, uh, let's move on. Um, 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 Rob, the next slide, yeah. Um, um, uh, in that slide, um, I'm talking generally about professional development and um, being a principal of a school right now and a professional development coordinator, I've got two positions, one academic and one administrative, of course. Um, uh, when schools are looking to hire teachers, uh, there are a few basic requirements, um, such as being college or such as having a college degree experience uh, with teaching kids or different age groups, and of course, patience as um, a trait or as a very um, a distinctive trait of being a teacher. And in, in order for these teachers to be effective um, um, or to be effective teachers and facilitators in their field, they need a variety of professional and development skills um, uh, um, along with knowledge and uh, the knowledge of their subject matter and experience, of course. Um, as we all know that uh, the cycle of professional development is uh, um, uh, is uh, is non-stop um, and you can um, we can start with learning and then mentoring those teachers then giving them consultation on one-to-one -one basis or maybe um, on group basis it, it depends on the setting and the venue you're working in uh, then they need to practice and they study and um, um, as a result of studying they improve then they need to reflect on their uh, learning and teaching and then they learn something new and the cycle is uh, 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 non-stop um, and uh, um, uh, during that challenging time of COVID-19 I think that we we need to take professional development to um, a different level um, of course uh, taking into consideration that we need um, to uh, um, uh, consider the 21st century skills of adaptation communication um, uh, adaptability uh, consultation and and so on uh, in my position now, Rob, can we move to the next slide? In my position now, I, as I mentioned, when I was appointed the position in one of the international schools, I met uh, the, the bunch of beautiful teachers and brilliant teachers I have. And um, I, I didn't know them, of course, before, so I wanted to get to know them academically. So I invited them to do demo lessons at the beginning. Um, they were a bit reluctant because they were not used to that. But I said, if, if I want to offer you um, a good service, then I need to know what you have and then uh, design my plan or uh, adapt and uh, tailor my plan according to your needs. Uh, so they delivered their demo lessons. It was uh, very short, I mean, 30 minutes. Uh, 
30 minutes in my lesson for, for each teacher of different, of different um, discipline. And uh, through those demo lessons, I, I started to know their teaching strategies, teaching skills, what they have, what they need to have, what they know, what they need to know, what they have to know, uh, what are the weaknesses and strengths of each. And through the reflections and feedback, I discovered that they are willing to learn more. Um, and through my, uh, through my talks, and uh, Rob, can we move to the next uh, slide, please? As we uh, get to know each other and as we moved on and along, um, uh, I, 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 I asked them about their experience with the online classes during the COVID-19 that uh, I would say erupted um, in March. They said that the, the experience was a bit challenging. It was very challenging, not a bit challenging, was very challenging. And for them, it was non-satisfactory due to the fact that they were um, thrown into Zoom without having any idea about what Zoom is, how they're, how they're going to deliver a lesson online. And uh, um, through their, um, their talk, I discovered that they were trying to teach everything online, everything, oh, everything they can do online. Then I decided to, uh, to get to know more from parents and the feedback. Uh, uh, can we move to the next slide, please, Rob? Through the collaborative meetings with teachers, uh, the coordinators and the supervisors, I discovered that the, the teachers were in, did not get enough training or did not get any training at all about how to deliver a lesson online and what are the tools that they need in order to deliver this successfully. Also, the, the next slide, please. Um, also through um, uh, uh, checking teachers, uh, uh, parents surveys and parents feedback, even the parents were not satisfied with the experience um, at all. And uh, I had uh, at the back of my mind that those teachers need to be even more professionally prepared to um, face whatever could happen in the next few months um, if we to um, happened for a, for a reason or another. So I decided in the next slide, I decided to uh, think of, uh, um, yeah, from my, my, my findings were that uh, teachers want uh, um, an admin to attend and participate in the PD sessions. Um, uh, they needed uh, um, a PD that is conducted by professionals with classroom experience, which I really have. Also, they needed their, their PD sessions to happen and uh, they can apply it right away in the face-to-face -face or the physical classroom in addition to the online classroom. They need need PDs that are relevant to students. They need PDs that are innovative and creative. They need professional development sessions that would make them better teachers. They need uh, nothing uh, theoretical, but they need something practical to help them. It also, uh, they also mentioned that they all they need is to collaborate and speak honestly, and they want their PDs to be relevant uh, for a long time. That's why when I thought about uh, uh, modifying and adapting uh, what the, they need and um, relating what they need to my plan, I decided to start with the, um, uh, the basic or the foundation uh, 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 plan, which is getting to know what Zoom is, how to maximize the use and manipulate uh, the platform to the, to the best. Um, and I gave them training on how to, to use Zoom effectively and uh, efficiently with um, uh, their students in class. The next, can we move to the next slide, Rob? Uh, uh, the next, uh, the next that, uh, the next um, uh, session, I decided to talk about how to flip a classroom and what is a flipped classroom, the advantages, the the disadvantages, how to plan a flipped lesson, how to deliver a flipped lesson, and um, uh, also I decided to uh, the third session, which is happening next week, how to use engaging online and online applications um, to help. Uh, students to be interested in in um, in what they are doing, like uh, uh, the flip grid. In the next slide, please, Rob. The flip grid, the Powtoon. 
yeah, uh, Flipgrid, Bowtoon, how to uh, uh, manipulate man gamification and how to use gamification online, especially with kids, because their main problem was that they were teaching uh, early years, year one and year two. So those kids uh, have short concentration span. And at the same time, the teachers were not able to control or to have good classroom management skills. So um, uh, I decided that in order to empower those teachers to face uh, uh, the challenges they had before, I need to arm them with knowledge and skills uh, to face uh, uh, the next wave of COVID if we have to stay home. Thank you very much. That is the end of my talk. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I did not rehearse it. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm, I'm going to have you be my new 10-minute uh, talk instructor. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great it's job. All of my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much. And um, that was great. Very informative. Thank you. Okay. So we're moving on. And let's see. All right, so are we gonna to go to the video or do we have a live speaker? I believe now two more videos and that's it. Okay, because I noticed that she was here, right? I think she's here in the room. Okay, well, we'll go to the next one. We have a pre-recorded video and give me a second to get that started. And of course, it's not going to open. Yeah. Um, the Maha Hosni one is an opening. It's a PowerPoint video. And it's not opening up. Let me see if I can get it to open. And... All right, let's. Um... I'm going to switch to the next one then. We're going to go ahead and we'll go to my video. Wait a second. Okay. And I hope the volume is okay on this. The volume might be a little bit low. It seems like it is. But um, bear with me a second. Let me bring up the video. And here we go. Hello, good evening. This is my one. Uh, Rob, uh, just to alert you, uh, I got uh, Mahaz working on my device. Um, Rob, I can't hear anything. Nothing um, at all? Um, Rob, remember with the sharing feature, yep. you have to check both boxes down there. 
Yeah. Probably they are not. Would you like me to try? No, yeah, I got it here. Oh, Let me start it. it again. Yeah, the volume is extremely low though. So let me try it again. Hello everyone. This is Marwal Garwan, an English language lecturer at the Faculty of Archaeology and Languages, Matruh University, a professional certified trainer from the AUC and the coordinator of the ESP, SEG of Nile Cecil. My short talk for today is entitled Multiple Intelligences in the EFL Classroom. We will explore the multiple intelligences theory to help explain different ways to this learn and identify implications for teaching regarding such theory in face-to-face -face and online environments. Similar to all students having varying learning styles and strategies, students can also possess multiple intelligences. The multiple intelligence theory presented by Howard Gardner, 1985, state that individuals have different intelligences or different ways that they understand and interact with the world. People's intelligences differ based on their strengths to carry out these intelligences. Now let's look at the types of multiple intelligences. Gardner categorizes the intelligences in the following ways. Visual, spatial, musical, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, verbal linguistic, logical, mathematical, naturalistic, inter intrapersonal. Now let's talk about each type and some practical activities that teachers can implement for all of the intelligences we have mentioned. Concerning the visual spatial intelligence, students think about physical space, their surrounding environments. They enjoy puzzles, maps, charts, and videos. Here, the activities may include solving English word puzzles, reading maps and reciting directions, and playing dictionary-like games. As for the bodily kinesthetic intelligence, students use the body effectively and have body awareness. They enjoy movement, hands-on learning, and using real objects. Here, the activities may be performing plays to reenact stories and readings, role playing or playing charades. Concerning the musical intelligence, students understand and are sensitive to rhythm and sound. They enjoy music, speaking rhythmically and in instruments. Activities here may include writing poetry, songs or raps for new vocabulary words, or performing routines to match gestures with vocabulary words. Concerning the interpersonal intelligence, students understand people's moods and intentions. They enjoy interacting with others, group activities and collaborative writing. Activities here may include dividing students into small groups or surveying peers and role playing. As for the intrapersonal intelligence, students here understand themselves and their own goals. They enjoy independent learning and private time. Activities here may be in the form of journal reflections on class topics or rewriting a story from another perspective. As for the linguistic intelligence, Students understand words effectively. They enjoy word games, reading, writing, stories, and poetry. Activities here may include creating stories, television show, or a radio newscast, or having a debate, or creating advertisements for business using the English language. Regarding the logical mathematical intelligence, Students understand reasoning and calculating. They enjoy logic games and puzzles, mysteries and experiments. Here the activities may include solving English mysteries or making predictions based on a reading or video. Concerning the naturalist intelligence, students can identify plants, animals, etc. They enjoy animals, insects, nature, being outside, gardening, and so on. Here the activities may include going on nature hikes, 
collecting items from nature, categorizing species and relating them to story characters. Here are some classroom face-to-face -face examples. To promote bodily kinesthetic intelligence in this class, students are using their bodies to spell new words. And to develop visual spatial intelligence, in this class, students use a graphic organizer to map out personal narratives. Now let's look at some multiple intelligences apps and web tools. For developing the visual spatial intelligence, apps like Bubbleus, Publet, and Webspiration Classroom could be used to help students make mind maps and graphic organizers. YouTube could be used to provide students with various interesting instructional and tutorial videos. Apps like LiveBoard, Interactive Whiteboard, Show Me, and EduCreations which are interactive whiteboard apps could be used could be used to help shape the visual collaboration ability of students. As for promoting the bodily kinesthetic intelligence, apps like Singing Fingers and Doodle Body could be used to develop it. For the musical intelligence, again the Singing Fingers app, where you can paint with your voice and Apps like Spotify and SoundCloud could be used to promote it. For developing the interpersonal intelligence, Facebook, WhatsApp, Skype, Blogger, Modo, and Google Classroom could be used to develop it. As for the intrapersonal intelligence, apps like Evernote, WordPress, Google Playbooks, and Prezi could be utilized to promote it. As for the linguistic intelligence, Google Docs, Evernote Peak, Voki, and Book Creator could be employed to promote it. As for the logical mathematical intelligence, apps like Google Sheets, iMathematics, Algebra Touch, Logic Puzzles, and Number Line could be used to develop it. Concerning the naturalistic intelligence, YouTube, Cell and Cell Structure, Starwalk, Science 360, and Leap Snap Plant Identification could be utilized to promote it. To conclude and to give some teaching implications, we can say that each person has all eight intelligences with varying levels. People can develop intelligences over time, and people can use multiple intelligences together. So teachers should be aware that every classroom has different students and that they learn in different ways, including their own intelligence profiles. So they should design activities, various strategies, and web-based tools and applications which allow students to practice their intelligences in their own ways and even allow for the practice of many intelligences at one time. So teachers can create many opportunities for them to learn. Thank you so much and hope you have enjoyed and benefited from this short talk. Goodbye. Hello everyone, this is Marwal Garwan, an English language lecturer and Okay, so here we are back again. All right. <clears throat> so, how do you want to? Yeah, if you wish, I can do that uh, yeah. from my end. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great if you could. And. Okay. All so, yours. All right, I appreciate it. So, what I should do is share from my end. Yeah. Okay, got it. And full screen and play. Hello everyone, this is Maha Hosni. Hello everyone, this is Maha Hosni, a chief instructor at Egypt Air Training Academy, an aviation English writer and a crew resource management trainer from. I'm just wondering if this could be bigger.
Yeah, I don't know. She has it as picture in picture. This is a little weird. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? So what I'm going to do anyways is um, mute myself. No, I shouldn't, right? Because I'm playing audio from my end. Yeah, Whatever. that's what I did on mine. I left my mic open and turned the volume up. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Maha Hosni, a chief instructor at Egypt. Okay. Sure. Just be bear with bear with us. It's just uh, we're trying this for the first time. I mean, air training academy and try that one to the right, to the very right, that kind of cross-looking one. Oh, that's yeah, I'm exiting screen. here full screen. That's what yeah. it does. Right. And no zoom it does, yeah, it does like it doesn't it doesn't give me anything here to increase it. Anyways, better than okay. nothing. Yep. So let's play it. All right. Great. Go ahead. Thanks. Hello, everyone. This is Maha Hosni, a chief instructor at Egypt Air Training Academy, an aviation English rater and a crew resource management trainer from Global Air UK. I am also a professional certified trainer from the American University in Cairo. A RILU E teacher, alumna, a RILU mentor, and I am appointed as the coordinator of the Nile TESOL English for Inclusive Education Special Interest Group. The lockdown has forced institutions to go online without any warning or preparation and consequently learn fast. There is a lot of experimenting going on as there is scarce experience in this area. In my short presentation, I will discuss some challenges of integrating technology in online classes during COVID-19. Digital literacies. Digital literacies are capabilities which fit an individual for living, learning, and working in a digital society. Literacy nowadays is no longer the ability to read and write, but now it is the ability to understand information however presented. Fresh graduates need to be digitally literate. Learners at all ages need to be supported by staff to develop academic digital literacies. Professional development as well is vital in developing such digital literacies. Technical difficulties with online teaching tools. Although educational technologies over the past decade have made distance teaching a lot much more easier, but there are still issues that teachers need to be aware of. As a teacher, you need to assess whether your students have reliable access to technology before you even start. Not every home will always have a reliable internet connection or readily available device for students to use. An initial email, message, or text to parents will give them the opportunity to flag these issues so that you can prepare to accommodate such students ahead of time. We always talk of our students as being digital natives, yet many of them aren't that proficient when it comes to tackling unfamiliar software or using it in a responsible manner. An initial onboarding session for students is therefore a good idea, and you should consider giving parents a brief orientation to via email or texting. Difficulty staying motivated. As hard as distance teaching might be for us, it's likely even harder for our students. They've gone from classrooms explicitly designed to support learning to bedrooms and kitchen tables where distractions are plentiful and expert support isn't always available. Clear measurable goals are the best source of motivation. When it comes to learning, rapport refers to close, harmonious relationships between the teacher and the students. It's the result of being able to click with your students. You connect, interact, and understand each other in a positive manner. You might consider gamified apps and programs as another way to increase motivation, particularly in the younger years. Online courses are harming the students who need the most help. 
A single teacher can reach thousands of students in an online course, opening up a world of knowledge to anyone with an internet connection. This limitless reach also offers substantial benefits for schools that need to save money by reducing the number of teachers. But still, there is an undeniable evidence that the growth of online education is hurting a critical group, that is the less proficient students who are precisely the most in need of skilled classroom teachers. Online courses can be broken down into several categories to cater for students' needs. Blended courses are somehow a solution as students don't do their work only online, they also spend time in a classroom with a flesh and blood teacher. Difficulty interacting with peers. In online courses, there is no classroom and therefore no ability to work on group projects or even converse with fellow students in a face-to-face -face environment. Not only that, but it's very easy to start to feel isolated from your peers and others because you are working on assignments and all school-related activities entirely alone. Even posting to messages boards or participating in group discussion can feel less interactive when they are done over the internet rather than in person, of course. Difficulty getting immediate feedback. Feedback can be almost immediate when you are sitting in a classroom with a teacher because you, you have a few minutes to take a look at your work and decide whether or not you are on the right track. When emailing assignments, however, it can become more difficult to get the feedback you are looking for. You have to wait for the instructor to get a chance to get online, which may not happen as frequently as you would like. And by the time you get the feedback you need, there could be very little time to make changes as necessary for the assignment resubmission. Time consuming resources. When you can no longer just stand in front of your class and teach, you have to rely on resources to do the job for you. And those take time to create. Recording your own instruction and posting it online, as in the case with flipped classrooms, is one way of avoiding the hassle, although this takes time as well. You might look further into ad tech solutions as possible time savers. Setting and forgetting online learning activities. Students aren't the only ones who might feel overwhelmed in a distance education setting. It can be a struggle for teachers too. Deprived from the face, time and classroom environments that inform so much of our job, it can be easy to revert to set and forget mode, assigning some work online and just hoping for the best. It's a time when our students need us more than ever before, and it is the perfect opportunity to innovate and to try something new. Thank you very much for being with me today. It's an honor being part of this highly esteemed community of practice of EFL teachers in Egypt and globally. I would like to end my short talk by saying that we will all remember the year 2020 as the stepping stone for all of us to be good teachers. May all the tears wept in the past months of 2020 water the seeds of hope and happiness of all the coming days. Thank you and goodbye. Very good. Well, so it seems that brings us to the end of another EFL Talks. And I really want to thank um, Hannah and Greta and all the speakers. You are wonderful. Big round of applause for all of you. And to all of you who sat 
and watched us. Um, thank you for joining us and, you know, help us spread the news. Um, let other people know. And I'm going to unlock everything. So what I'd like to do, if you could, you know, those of you who are dressed, flip on your camera and let's see a great round of, of applause for all the speakers. And thank you so much to everybody, all of you who are watching. George, hi. <laughs> Everybody, I appreciate it. And I hope you all come back and join us. Um, remember, next Sunday, fifth year anniversary. Yay! It's 10 and 10 to the 10th power. We're going to start at 10 a.m. in the morning, um, Poland time, which is CEST. Mm -hmm. And we should be running till 10 p.m. at night. So it's a true 10 to 10 with a 10 in 10 on World Teachers Day. And, um, you know, for the people who said I was crazy when I started this five years ago, they're right, because George can tell you he's been here enough. Um, I'm crazy. <laughs> but thanks to everybody. And I hope to see you next week. Um, again, thank you, all the speakers, all the listeners, all you EFL talkers out there, and hope to see you soon. Very soon. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Have a good night, everybody. You too, George. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Thank you Bye. all for joining us. Thank you for thank the you. lovely presenters. Thank you. Thank you, nice thank you. people. You take thank care. Thank you, Rob, for making it happen. Thanks. Appreciate it, dear. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>